temples. Temples were the biggest and most beautiful buildings in ancient Greece. Many were built to celebrate a city's success or to thank a patron god for help during times of war. Temples were made of limestone or marble with wooden roofs and ceilings. Huge stone blocks were carried from quarries in ox-drawn carts and carved on site by masons using chisels and hammers. The tall columns were made in cylindrical sections lifted into place with ropes and pulleys. Decorative phrases and statues added to the grandeur and beauty of the buildings. Cape So Union This 5th century BCE marble temple to Poseidon, god of the sea, was a landmark for sailors returning home to Athens. Zeus's Temple the Olympic Games, pages 44 to 45, were held every four years at the Sanctuary of Olympia. This was also the site of the colossal Temple of Zeus, built in the 5th century BCE. Temple of Ceres Poseidonia, later called Pestum in southern Italy, was a Greek colony and has the best preserved temples of the Greek world. This one, the Temple of Ceres, was later used as a Christian church. For hundreds of years, the site of Pestrum was hidden by swamps and undergrowth. This helped to preserve the buildings. Rosette Capital This huge marble capital, top of a column, comes from the temple of Artemis at Ephesus in modern Turkey. Doric The Doric style is sturdy and its capital is plain. It was often used in the colonies in southern Italy. Ionic the Ionic style is thinner and more elegant. Its capital is decorated with a scroll-like design, a volute. Corinthian. The Corinthian style is often seen on Roman temples. Its ornate capital is decorated with acanthus leaves. Lion's mouth. Rainwater was often drained from temple roofs through spouts in the form of lion's heads. This one comes from a temple in Preen, south of Ephesus. Columns and lintels. Most Greek buildings had vertical columns and supporting horizontal beams called lintels. Corinthian Capital This Corinthian capital once decorated a gracious colonnade building in Asia Minor, modern Turkey. The face is based on a female theatrical mask. The carved anchithus leaves were a favorite motif of Greek artists. Palmet Roof Tile The end of this roof tile is decorated with a palmet shape. It comes from a temple to Apollo at Bassi in southern Greece. Lotus leaves. This marble fragment is carved with lotus and palmet designs. It comes from the famous temple of the Erechtheion in Athens, pages 16 and 17. The roof of the south porch of the building is supported by columns in the form of standing women with baskets on their heads. Pericles ordered the construction of the Erechtheion to beautify the city of Athens. Vases and Vessels. The best Greek pottery was made in Athens, where the local clay fired to a beautiful reddish-brown color. Athenian potters worked in an area called the Keramikos, where they produced pottery for home and export. Geometric patterns were in the fashion between 1000 to 700 BCE. By 720 BCE, oriental motifs had become popular. In the black figure technique of the 6th century BCE, black silhouette figures were painted on the reddish clay background. Soon after 500 BCE, the red figure technique took over, in which figures were left unpainted to stand out against a black background. Black figure vases. Drink up. Drinking cups in the form of animal heads were very fashionable. This angry looking griffin Wrighton is a good example. First sip. This miniature wine pitcher is called a chouse. It would have been filled with wine, and given to a little boy as a special present during the festival of Dionysus, the god of wine. What a bore! The stories of Heracles, page 22, inspired artists. Here he holds the Arimanthian boar above King Eurystesis. The purplish-red color is a mixture of the black clay solution and red iron oxide. Water pot. This 19th century cartoon shows Sir William Hamilton, page 42, caricatured as a water pot, Hydria. Vase Vault. This engraving shows Sir William at a tomb in Italy. The skeleton is surrounded by vases from Athens. Vase Shapes. Vases were made in different shapes according to their uses. Storage containers for oil or wine. 
amphora, pea-like, hydria, pots in which to mix wine and water, calyx crater, volute crater, bell crater, dinos, pitches for pouring wine, onishau, alpi, onishau, alpi, drinking cups, kylix, skyphos, cantharos, riton, perfume oil and cosmetic containers, pixis, lakythos, squat lakythos, alabastrum, sphinx, the vase above is shaped like a sphinx, part woman, part lion, wine was poured in at the top and drained through a hole into another cup, this way air was introduced into the wine which made it taste better, water pot, a lion killing a stag, grazing horse painted in outline with interior markings. Corinthian pot. This perfume pot, Arabalos, was made in Corinth, a town that produced and exported novelty perfumes, pots, and curious shapes. Griffin. This picture has a spout in the form of a griffin's head made in the 7th century BCE. It is painted with scenes inspired by the East. Decorated interior. Look, two hands. This drinking cup, or kylix, was held by both handles. It was painted in the 5th century BCE in the red figure technique. No change. A modern potter is hand-painting a copy of a Greek vase. The ancient techniques are still used today. Crafts, travel, and trade. Craftsmen such as stone carvers, metal workers, and jewelers flourished in the cities of ancient Greece. They sold their wares at the agora, or marketplace. Farmers brought their produce to market on carts pulled by donkeys. The roads were poor and most people did not travel far from home. Long journeys were made by boat to avoid the mountains. There was a great deal of trade between the city-states and the Greek colonies, as well as other Mediterranean countries. Oil, wine, pottery, and metalwork were the main exports. Fishy business. Fishing provides a livelihood for many Greeks today just as it did in ancient times. This fisherman on the island of Mykonos is mending his nets. Temple treasures. This clay pitcher with coins was found at the temple of Artemis at Ephesus. The coins, made of electrum, probably dated from 650 to 625 BCE. The first coins were made in Lydia and Asia Minor, or modern Turkey, in the 7th century BCE. Coins showing the infant Heracles strangling snakes. Three coins. Each city-state issued its own coins. At first, they were made of electrum, a mixture of gold and silver. Later coins were made of pure silver or occasionally gold. Many were decorated with the symbols of Greek gods. Coin showing Cyrus, the king of Persia. A tortoise coin from the island of Aegina. Into Africa. This pot in the form of an African head is evidence that the Greeks traded as far as the African coast. Beasts of burden. Donkeys could negotiate narrow mountain tracks and carry heavy burdens. Shoemaker. This painting of a cobbler is at the bottom of a red figure cup. He is busy cutting and shaping strips of leather, boots, sandals, and tools hang from the wall above him. The scene would have become visible to the drinker only when he had drained his cup. At the loom. Upright looms such as this modern one were used to make clothing, drapes, and furnishing fabrics. Weaving was seen as a noble as well as a necessary task. Blacksmith. This painting shows a blacksmith removing a lump of molten metal with his tongs. The brick furnace would have been fueled with charcoal and bellows were used to fan the flames. Potter. Every Greek town had its potter's quarters, pages 48 to 49, where pots were made and sold. On this wine cup, a potter sits at his wheel, which he controls with his knee. His pots sit on the shelf above him. Below, his pet dog, now slightly damaged, watches him work. Deep seas. Wooden vessels like this one were used to fish in deeper waters where a great variety of fish could be found. Salted fish and eels were Greek delicacies.